In this segment, we're gonna get hands-on with the code and see what happens when we actually run it. So I've wrote it up, I've loaded it up here in REPL it. And uh, so we've got the files that we talked about on the left over here. And what we're gonna focus on is just the main in uh, main.java for right now. So the first thing that this does is it just reads in the two wiki text files. It reads in 15,000 lines of the first file, the training set, and then it reads in all the lines of the second set, this validation set, which we're not gonna talk about much right now. It then estimates the bigram language model. So it does that process of counting over the train lines and returns a bigram language model object, which stores all these counts and can compute probabilities. What we're gonna focus on is these next two steps, this check normalization operation and this query LM operation. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at what those do. So the check normalization operation is going to make sure that the language model normalizes or sums to one given three different contexts. And this is basically a sanity check for us to see that what we've computed is actually a probability distribution and not just some random numbers. So what that does is it, is it first starts with defining a total probability to be 0.0, .0 and then loops over every word in the vocabulary and computes the probability of that word given some fixed previous word and adds up those probabilities in this total prob variable. Then we check whether that total prob is different from 1.0, and we don't want it to be. So let's pop over here where I've run this. And what we see here is that we tried it with three contexts, the, asked, and did. And the model basically sums to one. Uh, now, floating point uh, arithmetic is a little tricky, and so when we're adding up a whole bunch of floating point values, you're gonna get rounding errors and things like that. So you see that it actually sums up to 1.0000079 or whatever, um, but this is very close to one and, and basically confirms that we have a probability distribution because after the word the, we checked the sum of the probabilities of every possible next word and got something very close to one. Okay, cool. So then the next thing that we do is query the language model. Uh, and so I'm not gonna focus too much on the code here. Um, it involves uh, a little bit of kind of iterating through these maps and stuff to get the uh, five most uh, high scoring words. Let's instead look at what it does. So it returns this list of, in this case, the top five words and probabilities after the word the, uh, which uh, in this case, the most likely next word is actually this unk word, which is a placeholder that's used in the data to get rid of things like entity names or you know, place names that aren't in the vocabulary. So it actually, after the word the, you're actually kind of most likely to see this unk placeholder. Um, but then the next most likely word is first, which is sort of interesting. Uh, that's maybe not what you would have expected, and it may not be correct, but that's actually what's most commonly shows up next in the data. And then there's quotation mark united, which is probably for the United States, and then same. So there's a whole bunch of words with various probabilities here, and you can uh, kind of get a sense of what those are. Uh, and then we did the same thing for and and like. So this is generally what allows us to kind of look at what the predictions of the, the model are on, on the next words. Okay, so that gives you a sense of what these two, uh, of what these two pieces of code are doing. And now we're gonna talk about this process of actually completing the next sentence and uh, finding essentially the most probable or a random continuation of a sentence that we have so far. So we're gonna implement a method called getBestWord, which is going to find the most probable next word given the language model and a context word. So you can either use query LM or you can kind of do this yourself. Uh, 
the kind of useful helper methods are lm.getVocabulary gets all the possible words as a collection of strings that you can iterate over. And then you can loop over those and use lm.getProbability to check the probability of each word. Um, and you want to keep track of the best word and its probability. Um, so you'll need to define some uh, kind of local variables in order to do that. All right, and so then we've also provided for you get best sentence, which just repeatedly calls get best word and is going to do this process repeatedly. Um, so it'll normally just repeat for as long as you tell it. Uh, if you want to, you could stop it when it gets to an end of sentence token or something like that. Okay, so that's kind of part one. When you look at that, you might notice that sometimes these continuations aren't that interesting. And you can get much more interesting stuff if instead of taking the most likely next word, you take a random next word. So that's what sample word and sample sentence do, which follow the same kind of template uh, of getting the you know, one next word and then repeatedly doing it for several. OK, so we need a random word. So in Java, you can get a random number by importing java.util.random, constructing a uh, random number generator r, and then call r.nextdouble, which gives us a random real number between 0 and 1. OK, but that's just a random real number, right? We wanted a random word. We need to actually take that random number and use the probability distribution from the model and sample from it. So I'm going to give you an algorithm to do that. So here's how we think about the distribution from the language model at a given time step. So you know maybe we've just seen the word and. Uh, and we have the following probabilities of words, which I mean again are, are made up. These aren't the real probabilities. So what we do is we need to map this 0, 1, double onto this uh, set of probabilities and use it to draw a sample. And so let's, let's just define x to be our random number. And suppose we just randomly drew x equals 0 0.51. What we're going to do is we're going to iterate through these possible outcomes and add up their probabilities and take the first one where the sum of the probabilities so far exceeds 0.51. So if the sum including the current probability is greater than or equal to x, then we return x as the sample. And so notice in this case, you get 0.25 for the plus 0.1. OK, 0.35, that's still not greater than 0.51. OK, and then you add a 0.2, so you get 0.55. That is greater than 0.51, so we return of. So just to kind of convince ourselves that this does something reasonable, when would we return the? Well, we'll return the if x is less than 0.25. So that matches the probability that it should that we should be getting, right? I mean, uh, we have a one in four chance of drawing an x that's that low, and so we'll get the one in four times. And otherwise, we'll move on. And then for the second word for a, uh, we are going to you'd pick that one if x is greater than 0.25 but less than 0.35. So by looping through this, basically what we're doing is we're taking that random number from 0 to 1 and, and using that to actually get a sample from this distribution. OK, so that, let, that gives you uh, enough to get started on this. So you could play around with uh, different contexts, sample things, sample things of different lengths, sample a whole bunch of times, and kind of look, look at what happens. So once you've got these implemented, you can see how the language model behaves. That's the end of this segment.